So Mr. Gilliam, Gilliam shared that uh, he, he celebrated a significant birthday earlier this year. I wonder what's best for you about birthdays. Is it the presents? Is it the party? Or is it something else that makes it a very special day? I wonder what's the worst thing about birthdays for you? Is it being another year older? If you're young, that's good, isn't it? If you're older, perhaps not so good. Or is it when you wake up the next day and you think, oh, I've got to wait a whole year now for my next birthday? Or is the worst thing about birthdays having to write thank you letters? See, our reading that Stephen read for us, in a sense, was a thank you letter. A thank you note tacked on to the end of the letter to the Philippians. He'd already said, just a few verses earlier, earlier, finally, and then he said, peace be with you, and then he says, thank you. All through the letter, Paul has been giving the Philippians reasons to be joyful, to rejoice, and he finishes by saying a reason he rejoices. He has received a gift from them. I have a gift, wrapped up in some rainbow paper, tie in with our sort of theme from earlier on. Oh, it's a book. It's a book. Maybe we'll look at that book in a moment. Back to those thank you letters. Three parts to a thank you letter normally, isn't there? We thank the giver. We say, secondly, how great the gift was. And thirdly, we say what we've done with it. Well, as long as we haven't thrown it in the bin, as long as we haven't given it to a charity shop, or if it's money, as long as we haven't spent it all on sweets. That's the normal three parts to a thank you letter, isn't it? But Paul's thank you is different. He doesn't really mention what the gift was or how it was used. In actual fact, he doesn't really sort of acknowledge that he was looking for a gift. He talks about the givers. Verse 17 says this, Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. Paul is saying that in giving, the people who really benefit are the givers. In Acts 20, 35, Jesus is said to have said, it's more blessed to give than receive. So this morning, if the Lord's moved you to give, you've been blessed. It's been good for you to give. I wonder, do you think Agape Ministries and do you think Fulani Ministries will send us a thank you note? I, I expect they will, you know. I expect they'll tell us exactly what they've been able to do with the money that we've been able to give. And that's great. But do you know what? I think that even more than receiving the gift that we might be able to send them, more than that, I think they'll be thrilled at something else. I think they'll be thrilled and excited that some Christians in the United Kingdom have thought about them, have cared for them, have been moved to show love for them in a practical way. Earlier in his letter, Paul talks about the fact that the Philippians were partners in the gospel with him. And we've had the privilege this morning of being able to be partners in the gospel with these two projects in Africa. The Givers. My book. I wonder if anybody has ever been given or got the autograph of somebody really famous. I wonder if you have. Autograph, where they sign their name. And maybe you think, oh, that's going to be worth a few pounds in a few years' time. But actually, and let me show you in my book. I've got something written in my book. 
Hi, Keith. Great to meet you, David Beckham. Now, I wonder what you'd think when you first opened that and saw that in your book. Would you think, I wonder how much that's going to be worth in a few years' time? Or would you think, he's written to me. He said hello to me. He said, it was great to meet me. We're almost like best friends. <laughs> you see, when we get that autograph from somebody special, actually we're, we're more interested in the fact that, well, that person stopped to think about me for that moment. There's a sort of a, a relationship, maybe, a friendship. That's what's significant. It's like if you're very young or when you were very young, perhaps you made a card for your mum. And it may have been really messy. And it may have been really sticky. But your mum didn't mind. Because it showed that you cared. It showed that you cared about her, that you loved her, that you had a relationship with her. So, I think the significant thing about our giving this morning is, well, in a sense, it's that we'll be able to help these folk, but we have built, we are building a relationship, a support for them in the ministry that they're doing. The challenge here, though, is it doesn't stop here, does it? It mustn't stop with just giving. We must continue to care and share. We must continue to pray and to support. Paul, in his letter, in verse 14, says, It was good of you, the Philippians, to share in my troubles. He knew that the Philippians cared. In actual fact, we're remembering the Philippians and their giving this morning because they remembered Paul. Paul acknowledges their care and concern. Sometimes in a book, often in a book, you have a page with the acknowledgements on. A thank you to the people who helped. Well, for Paul, all that he could say, the only people that he could acknowledge were the Philippians. Only the Philippians supported him. Verse 15, moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. Now we know that perhaps we're not the only church, or certainly not the only individuals who are supporting Agape or Fulani. But it's important that we play our part because of the opportunity that God has given for us to do that. But I was really challenged as I thought about this week. God may have somebody that he wants you to show care or concern for. And in actual fact, you might be the only person in a position to share or care with that person. Maybe it's a student who's come here to study at university. Maybe it's a student going away to study. Maybe it's a neighbour. Maybe it's a friend at school or at college who needs to be included, involved with what's going on. Maybe God would challenge you this morning about seeing who you should send that card to, who you should write that note to, who you should phone, who you should pray for. Why don't you ask God this morning to show you who he would have you care for? Because it may be that you're the only person in a position to do that. And don't be surprised when someone comes to mind. Act on that prompting that God can and will give you. But this passage is more about, about more than giving and givers. It's about more than caring and sharing. It's about a secret. We all like secrets, don't we? Verse 12. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. We sung about it this morning. I can do all or all, all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the open secret. Our verse 13 says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. 
So Paul is saying that his contentment doesn't depend on what he gets and what he's given. It doesn't depend on having a good education. It doesn't depend on, on being given a vehicle. It doesn't depend on what he's received. It doesn't depend on anything that this world has to offer. His contentment depends simply on being in Christ. Being a Christian. Being saved. Living life with and for Jesus Christ. That word content is, is in a sense like saying contained. I say, I am content. It's like saying, I am contained. I have all the resources within me. That's what makes me content. I don't rely on what I can get or what I have or what material things might be coming my way to make me happy. I am content because what I have within. And what that is, is the Lord Jesus Christ by his Holy Spirit. If you're looking for contentment, that is the way to find it, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Back to my book, my contents page. These might be the contents of your life. These might be the things that you've striven for, that you've worked hard for, that you've wanted. Our lives can be filled with lots of things. But my life, your life, will only truly be content when Jesus Christ is in your life. When he is number one. And then all these other things are seen through the filter of that relationship of knowing and loving the Lord Jesus Christ. So much so that even if all those things were taken away and all that you had was Jesus Christ, you would be content. It's probably true that many of the folk who Agape and Fulani Ministries will be reaching out to, if all they have was Jesus Christ, they would be content. And that's a challenge for you and me too this morning, isn't it? Are we content in Jesus Christ? That's the secret of a contented life. And that's the secret, the open secret, that Agape and Fulani will be seeking to share we're not this morning just about giving so that people have. We're giving to these ministries so that they can be effective in sharing that open secret with people who haven't heard it. Back to my book as we draw to an end. On the back of my book, I have the blurb. The bit on the back of the book that tells you what the book's about or what the key thought is. What the really important thing is that would make you want to read or take this book seriously. You see, the God that we are worshipping, that we are learning about this morning, is a generous God. And he can make you content. He will through the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for you on the cross. But the verse on the back of my book says this, and it's what we've read in verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We have a generous God. He's promised to meet all our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Paul tells the Philippians in verse 18 that their gifts, what they have given, primarily and most of all, are pleasing to God. When Noah made his sacrifice that we thought about earlier, it was him expressing his gratitude, his thanks to God. And that reminded me, as we think about sacrifice, of Ephesians chapter 5, where it says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus gave all that he had. He gave his very life for you and me, dying on the cross that our sins might be forgiven, that we might know new life and new hope in him. And not only do we know that new life, we know the assurance of this promise. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And so that means we're called to do something this morning. We're called to give, not 
give our money. We're called to give ourselves. We're called to say, well, if this is true and God will promise to meet all my needs in Christ Jesus and I can know that confidence and assurance, why then, what's stopping me for going and living all and out, all and all, out and out for the Lord Jesus Christ in my life? Will you take that challenge this morning? Will you realize that it's more than about giving money? It's about giving your life in service of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why do we do that? The dedication at the end of our book. The dedication, verse 20, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. May it be true of your life and mine that we live it to the glory of of God. Let's pray together. Our Father God, we thank you for all that you have given us. We thank you supremely for the Lord Jesus Christ that you gave because you loved the world so much and who was willing to suffer and die so that our relationship with you could be restored. Thank you for the new life that we can know in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the new hope that we can know. We pray, Lord, that as Agape uh, and Fulani Ministries continue their work, more folk in Africa would know of the hope and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we recognize, Lord, that we mustn't stop at just giving our money. Lord, you want our very lives. We pray, Lord, that we would put them in your hands and that we would be, indeed, living sacrifices, showing our gratitude to you for all that you've done for us and living lives to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.